Uh, for 2018, we uh, we had a great year. We we generated 17 million dollars of revenue last year. I didn't know as I was growing up that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Um, I come from a uh, a blue collar family um, where uh, my father was a miner and uh, my mother was a stay stay at home mom. So that's kind of the environment that I was brought into. So I thought I'd be more or less a labor uh, as a as a as a, as a job. So when I was in high school, uh, my mandate was to achieve a, just an average, an average score at, at school. And uh, so I dedicated my, uh, my time to sports is, is what I did. And as long as I maintain an average, an average grade, I was happy with that. Uh, I dedicated most of my time to, to sports. And in grade 12, uh, when I was playing football, I actually broke my leg. And I was in the cast for about two months. And I really had nothing to do with my time. So uh, I figured, well, why don't I spend some time studying? And I figured out that, well, it wasn't that hard to study. Uh, and I also understood the correlation between the amount of work you put into your studies uh, really equates to the grades you get. It's pretty simple. Right. And uh, so I went from an average student to a top of the class student. Oh, wow. And that's when I, you know, I understood that I, I had you know, I, I, I could do a lot more in my life. When my guidance counselor sat me down and asked me uh, what I wanted to do in my life, and I said, well, I'm going to go to college and be an electrician. And then he said, yeah, you should try engineering. And so I decided to, to listen to him, and uh, I decided to go to, to engineering just based on his recommendation. So he changed my life. But I graduated, and I got to tell you, when, when I finished university, um, I felt that I had a lot of confidence in my abilities to tackle any problem. And that's really what university gave me. I landed a job at Falcon Bridge here in Sudbury as, as an electrical engineer. Okay. And uh, yeah, so again, even at that point in time, so now I'm like, whatever, 22, 23, I didn't even realize that they had electrical engineers in mining, right? But they have all the disciplines in engineering. It's actually a, a, a fascinating industry. You, you look at any mining operation, even today, and ask the question, how many of the senior leadership are electrical engineers and good luck finding 0.1%. I knew that, um, that, I was be, that I was limited within, within uh, that company, that specific company at the time. There was right. really no marketplace in Northern Ontario to offer process control and automation type of uh, engineering services, consulting right. services. So I just looked at that and I said, you know what, I think there's a need right. for this type of service to be offered in Northern Ontario. And I also had five years of uh, practical experience. So I figured, you know, I've got everything I need to, to start up and, and run best deck from that perspective. In my mind, my wife knew that this was a dream of mine, right? So five years later, when I finally made the decision that I was going to start off and I was going to go on my own, I just tendered my resignation letter to my boss. And I said, look, I'm going to start my own company. And I just want you to know about this. So he was a little bit shocked and surprised. And, um, and, but I did it. So then I came home and I said, Hey honey, guess what? I, I, I decided to follow our dream. She said, well, what's, what's that? I said, well, remember five years ago, we talked about starting our own company. Well, I just quit my job and I'm starting my company. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. And I thought she would like be all on board with this right away. Cause we had our meeting five years ago. Right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she was a little worried, but I just showed her my plan. So what's that saying? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Right. right? right so, yeah. well, me to me, plan is about, it's everything. Before you do anything, plan, plan, plan. Right. So that's what I did. I, I showed her the plan and we worked on it together. And we said, look, this is going to work, right, for these reasons. It was very simply uh, process control and automation services. So in order to start up the business, I, I, I received a $150,000 loan from TD, which is still our primary bank 25 years later. Within a year, we had the five uh, people employed, and I think our revenue was $350,000 or something. When I first started, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really understand uh, financial statements, process and uh, uh, not process, but profit and loss statements and balance sheets and all that. To start right. off, right? To start off, you simplify it all. My first contract came from Falconbridge. Uh, like I said, I was there for five years and I, right. I made a lot of uh, uh, good friends when I was there. Uh, but the people who hired me, they understood the skills that I had and they knew they needed help. When I started, Falkenberg is pretty much my only client. And then when Dennis joined me, well, Falkenberg is a little bit upset. So they started closing that tap. 
which it was a great thing for us because it forced us to say, look, if this business is for real, we need to have other clients. We can't rely just on one. So it forced, uh, it forced us to really think about how we're going to market and how we're going to grow our client base. So obviously here in, in Sudbury Valley, was the, uh, well, at the time it was Inco, um, was a place that we, uh, we went and knocked on their door and started getting some, some revenue from them. You have ideas and concepts like this hoist console. Right. And would I call that a success for us? No, because we only sold one. Okay. Right. Because we quickly realized that the marketplace was controlled by companies like ABB. Right. It's important to decide at some point, say, look, you know, that marketplace is not what we thought it was. We understand it more because we went and played in it. Okay. Not a good place for us. Let's move on and do something else. We focused in on, on ventilation as the area where, uh, it's the most energy intensive assets in the mine. And it's also an area that there's more opportunity for reducing energy consumption. Okay. Um, now energy one eco is an application that does that on a high level. The technology uh, foundation that we've developed around it is, is a technology uh, that's brand new to the world. And it's also a framework that's brand new and we call it industrial plug and play. Right now we have, um, Rio Tinto up in uh, Dyavik that's been using that technology for at least six years and they're off grid. So all their power is uh, generated and we save them $5 million a year. And it's purely on, on energy savings, consumption savings. First big project that we really lost on what typically we were involved in was let's have fall commercial nickel rim came on board, a big mine, a billion dollar project. And they went EPCM to one and we, barely got any work out of that mine. And that's a local, a local mine here in Sudbury. So right away we saw this as a big, a big issue for our, our model and we needed to change our model. So what do you do? Well, you got to compete against the big guys. So you got to become right. a big guy. You have to start providing more than just automation services. The first large project that we won was uh, Fraser Morgan. It's a validation of the model change. The fact that we're, we're asked to bid on these projects. As we've been growing, uh, we've maintained that, that sense of ownership with our employees and we get them involved ownership and innovation. Innovation. I, and it's a culture of that, that was Over a very, uh, that was a very stressful moment in my life for sure. Um, because my family at Best Tech is the same as my family at home. When that, the collapse of the, uh, the marketplace occurred, uh, there's a general panic in all industry to just ratchet down and, minimize the cost going up. It was tough. So we, uh, I think at the time when, when it first came on board, we, we had 80 employees and, and we went down to 50 within a matter of a couple of months. And then, uh, we also, uh, agreed to take pay cuts. So senior management got 50% pay cut management 20 and all the other employees got 10. Most of the people that, that I I've let go personally is because you realize at some point that there's not a good fit. Okay. And, and I take it personally because I feel like I should have recognized that before bringing them on. Right. Because when I bring somebody on to me, it's a commitment. I had this one employee who, um, who wanted to try it on his own. And, uh, as he was an accounting background, so I said, no problem. I'll buy you a notebook. I'll buy you some software and that'll get you going to start off. Our objective right now is, um, to have focus. How are you? Um, how are you a, an innovator of products when you're an engineering company, right? So right. that, that's, that's hard to sell. You understand the best tech focus we have, and right. we also have the shifting focus, which is very product centric. How do you grow this and maintain that the efficient operation, right? And so what we've learned over, over the years, and to me, the business model is very important, right? And right now we we try to operate on, on a very flat structure. Okay. Okay. I see. We try to run this as flat as possible, so that you don't have all this hierarchy and I complexity. See. Okay. Because the more hierarchy you have within an organization, then the communications become challenging. It's all about people, right? And understanding that you really need that key principal person to really develop and grow that team.